Welcome to this uh, wonderful evening of the Bliss Catchers uh, at Odyssey. Um, my name is Vani, for those of you who don't know me. I see a lot of familiar faces and it's, uh, it's wonderful to see that this, uh, there's a kind of a little community around uh, people who are following their bliss. Uh, so this is wonderful. Um, for those of you who are uh, new, uh, the Bliss Catchers is a monthly event that we are doing um, at Odyssey. And um, it features people who have uh, uh, given up uh, something that they are doing uh, in favor of what gives them joy. So that's what the event series is all about. Um, before uh, we start, uh, may I request you all to put your mobile phones in the silent mode as a courtesy to the guests. Um, it's a pleasure to have with, with us uh, Anil Srinivasan. Thank you for making it, Anil. Um, Anil, um, I think perhaps uh, it's common knowledge that um, Anil gave up uh, a degree in Colombia. Um, completing his PhD in Colombia, if I'm, am I right, uh, to follow his uh, bliss and uh, be a musician, a pianist in particular. Um, the first time I heard him perform, uh, I was mesmerized uh, because I uh, didn't quite imagine that the piano could lend itself to the Carnatic uh, uh, compositions. And uh, I do remember uh, coming back and uh, talking about it to anyone I saw. So uh, I remember uh, you know, being mesmerized by his performances. Um, so um, I was just uh, seeing a cartoon the other day, which uh, you know, made me laugh out loud. Um, there's this uh, little graphic. Uh, it's, it's a modern day guru uh, who's sitting there. And uh, there's a guy who comes and asks him, uh, Guruji, uh, what is happiness? And uh, so the man is thinking and he says, I don't know, the computers are down. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, it was like, okay, fantastic. You know, the, today it's a Google generation. So the computer is down and you, you just don't know. I mean, I'm just joking. It was just a joke. Um, and um, why I'm, why I'm uh, bringing up this joke here is that I feel uh, Happiness is something that uh, we're all searching for. And uh, quite obviously, you're not going to get the answer on Google. Uh, but uh, it's something very personal. And uh, it's something that uh, you know, is deep within us. And when we, uh, when we start uh, searching, I think um, all of us commonly make the mistake of looking for it around us. Uh, it's easiest found when you start looking within. And I think uh, we're looking uh, forward to this enlightening conversation uh, with Anil. Um, so those of you who came here thinking he's going to perform, uh, he's not performing. <laughs> we're going to <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're going to get him to tell us uh, what brought him on this journey of following his bliss, uh, being a musician, and um, doing what is giving him joy. Um, so in conversation with him is my husband, Avis, uh, who I always take the pleasure of uh, introducing. Uh, Avis is a life coach, uh, a, mo a motivational speaker, and uh, he's also an author of uh, the book Fall Like a Rose Petal. So um, I'll hand it over to Avis, and he'll take us through uh, the rest of the day, evening. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome uh, to this um, evening. I'm really looking forward to the conversation with Anil for, for a couple of reasons, and you'll discover the reasons as we go along. I'll probably tell you what I was looking forward to in the very end, uh, and why this conversation is going to be very, very different and, uh, you know, uh, definitely enriching. Uh, I see a lot of new people here, so uh, welcome, welcome to our uh, event. Uh, thank Ashwin for always being uh, such a great host. Uh, to have all of us here. Uh, the Bliss Catchers is, is inspired by the famous um, um, thought philosophy of uh, James Campbell, uh, Joseph Campbell. And uh, what, what he said, uh, you know, has inspired my life in, uh, in, in, in a great measure, where he says, uh, if you follow your bliss, doors will open. And I saw that on your, on your, um, on your Facebook wall the, yesterday, where Anil is sitting on, a, uh, you know, 
with the door open behind him and he says doors always open so uh, it was it was more than just um, uh, a metaphor it was uh, it, it it happens a lot in real life so vani and i have seen that a lot in our own personal life through through the story of our own life that whenever we have stayed rooted to what gives us joy times are difficult uh, we we we've been through uh, bankruptcy we're still going through one but when we are rooted in in our joy in doing what gives us joy uh, we find that something or the other connects you to people who connect you to other people and uh, things happen what you need gets done uh, arrives when you need it the most uh, and so uh, life goes on so that's what inspired us to you know indu was asking us what led you to start the series that's what inspired us to start the series in january and it's been a you know a very um, very very uh, uh, exciting experience talking to guests and uh, getting them to share their stories so with that we'll a little introduction we'll jump into anil's story so i'm going to actually break the story into a few parts um, and i'm going to ask anil some questions related to each part so his early life uh then there is this very interesting phase in his life uh when when uh, you know he's pursuing his academics in the US and um uh you know he's going to talk about that and the third phase is the uh the, the third phase of his life is the one that he's currently in uh the last 10 12 years of being uh, such an acclaimed musician uh, but more than acclaimed musician being such a happy musician uh following his bliss uh and i want to also tell um our guests here that uh, there is no preparation you know um, anil doesn't know what's coming his way this is the first time he's hearing what's coming his way and there's no preparation and that's the way it should be that's when it flows so um you started learning um, um you started playing the piano uh, uh, um i understand at the age of 3 uh, and you took a liking to uh, to 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 the instrument what what made you or what what circumstances um uh, made you pursue academics uh, when you could have possibly chosen uh, to things. play the piano okay so this is an easy one so <laughs> i'm i'm actually anticipating every question with this uh, uh, what are you going to ask kind of thing so um i i see some people standing so maybe yeah, first yeah. they can be seated there are some, and there some are more, more chairs some more and chairs and there's some on the side um and i always say this at recitals uh, young people can always sit on the floor too so <laughs> I, i know but there is enough uh, there are enough chairs, enough and, chairs. You know. um so first of all uh, uh, hi to avis and vani and um so what made me do this so my mother sitting right here so it's a bit uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to do anything but tell the truth <laughs> uh, there are many interviews in which you tend to buffer up the material and present it very interestingly but today i'll just stick to the truth my wife is sitting right there my my, my mother is here so this in fact the first thing my wife said today is that um, so i said i'm only talking you don't have to come and she said no every time you talk in public i learn something new about you that i didn't know <laughs> so <laughs> that's the which is why she's here um so the story is and she can confirm this that at the age of 3 uh, i apparently walked over to the piano uh, in my school and one of my school teachers is here um, in vidya mandir and uh, i i demanded to want to play the piano and uh, the the music teacher who uh, was meena radha krishnan who's incidentally shemangudi shrinivasayar's daughter in law so that's where the schizophrenia starts uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know um i of course i don't know all that i'm 3 years old so apparently i said i want to learn to play the piano uh, not even learn to play i said i just want to play and she thought seri you know this is like a kid and he wants to go and play something and usually kids come if you look at kids with instruments they just go like to bang stuff she thought i was just going to bang stuff and so she lifted me up and put me on the chair and apparently i just played a tune very coherently it's sort of like a movie and um, i have no recollection of it uh, because over the years uh, it has been embroidered and told to me as though i was mozart playing on the keys <laughs> i don't i don't think so uh, it's just that i for some reason uh, visual spatial correlation between notes and how you could use notes to create anything you want 
uh, was something that I, ha I, have, I have always felt for the entirety of my life. Um, I remember we had, um, we had a driver who used to pick me up, uh, uh, all of us up, my cousins here. Um, and I used to, he used to hold my hand and I would be drumming like this, even when I was very, very young. Uh, even now when I look at a piano anywhere and, uh, and you keep seeing pianos everywhere, um, is that there is so much that can be expressed in music uh, that you can't express in words. And you do, I somehow have never felt restricted that, oh, the instrument has this capacity, doesn't have this capacity, I can't play this. I have never told myself that I can't play something. I've always felt the, uh, the inexhaustible ability to play anything I choose to play. Um, I'll give you an amusing anecdote from three days ago and then I'll come back to the question. Because I know you said three minutes per question, but I'll, I'll try to stick to that. I love the mic, by the way. <laughs> uh, um, for those of you who have come to my concerts, you already know that. Um, I, um, three days ago, I was playing in Trivandrum. Uh, and I played at the Sri Swati Tirnal College of Music. Um, what turned out to be a model, they didn't know who I was, what I was doing. They got my name wrong and everything because piano, yanda mm sare, -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I played and there, there were actually 500 people who showed up and other than that, 300 were coming from the Asian Christian College of Music. So you had one aisle which was full of Western classical music listeners, one aisle which was full of the purest Carnatic music listeners, and I am sitting here in the center. Now the Kutambalam of that place is attached to the temple, so I had to play bare-chested. I think I'm the only bare-chested pianist in the entire world, <laughs> right? So, um, Veshti and bare-chest and whatever, and playing a piano. And the two different, in fact, they asked me, they said, don't like a kashto alien. I said, yeah, kashto la paakar vang like kashto. <laughs> so, they, they have two sides of the uh, thing. And so I started playing Swati Tirnal, and then suddenly this group of people I felt were getting restless. So the second piece I played was a Western classical piece. This group started getting restless. <laughs> so I looked at this side and I again played a Swati Tirnal and then halfway through it, somebody put up their hand and said, please make up your mind. <laughs> so uh, I said, okay, let's do this. So the next one hour, I played Swati Tirnal and I played Western classical as integrated pieces. So what I did is I took the first couple of lines from a Swati Tirnal Pallavi, integrated with a Bach, and then brought it back to a Swati Tirnal kind of thing. And the thing is that it, it's not a great reflection of how, of course, I, 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 these are things that in a regular journalistic interview, I'd like to say, you see, I'm a genius, so I'm able to do this. <laughs> but it's got nothing to do with that. It's just that um, it's like language, right? Music is a language, just like mathematics is a language. All of these things are languages. That once you start getting comfortable with the joy of communicating in that particular language, the barriers don't exist. So, uh, we all used to make fun of Major Sundarajan when we were young, right? Eat the button, I'll what in Abdin Ramadri. That you can speak English and Tamil at the same time. Most of us can do that. So, it, it is like that. You can play anything you like to play simultaneously. It really, there is no restriction in all of that. It's all in the mind. I'll come back to the question. So, the, Thank you. the mm -hmm. three, the th so from the age of three, so Meena Radhakrishnan was my first teacher. And then, and that's it. I just kept learning and learning and learning. And I, I just kept playing the piano. It never struck me even once that uh, this was not what I was supposed to be doing as a uh, Tamilian grow growing up in Chennai or anything like that. And I owe that to my mother actually for, uh, for not thinking even for a minute that I should be doing anything other than playing the piano. That I should be learning Carnatic vocal or I should be learning Bharatanatyam or I should be learning Mridangam or whatever it is. I'm very glad that they didn't force me into doing anything at all. That I just kept doing that and that's all there is to it. Then but why, why did you why get did into you, academics? Why did you get into academics? You could have gotten. I think that's a combination of. Unfortunately, I think that's a combination of also growing up in Chennai and growing up in a Vidya Mandir-like environment, and your peers start influencing you after a point of time. That is one part of it. The other part of it, of course, is that financially we went through a bit of a setback too. And I was discussing that. I think around the time I was in the twelfth, maybe, and uh, earlier, I think I would have liked to have gone abroad to study uh, music. I think that would have been my intention. Uh, the one person I think I miss very much is my aunt uh, and my aunt and uncle who 
I think right from at the time I was very young, we used to go abroad a lot and they used to bring back these brochures of uh, piano concerts from Austria, from you know places they used to visit. And somewhere for me, uh, I remember my Atimber made me write a letter to Kurt Waldheim at one point of time and said, give me a scholarship so that I can go study music. I don't think Kurt Waldheim has ever received that letter ever. <laughs> but it just made me feel good to know that I could have done these kinds of things when I was young, right? Children are amazing creatures. They, they don't think in constraints. So the, um, it's this combination of a financial issue which, and sort of I put that in a back burner and I said, this is not the time to be thinking of where will we come up with the kind of money to finance that, uh, which would have been entirely very selfish. And I think the other thing would have been that, um, you know, the, I was academically fairly good. Pushpa is yes. correct. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so it was. It, there was. So a, there I was a family there, was, there was definitely a family situation involving finance, and coupled to the fact that in Madras at that time, given what we were going through, um, I had sort of reached the um, Rubicon as far as piano and pianistic learning is concerned. There's nothing more I could have done. So. Um, what more can you do with the piano? I mean, now you have every street corner has a keyboard class or a piano class or whatever. Um, uh, there are people who, I mean, like I, I heard this year alone, Trinity exam um, takers were 15,000 in Madras. In my year, I did uh, Associated Board Royal Schools of Music. In my year, there were three. So. This is what's happened now, right? So, and if you Google kit the katklame, you don't even need a piano teacher anymore. You need Google Guru only. So everybody is learning. So this was it. So f a combination of financial situation plus uh, it was the right thing to do. Lack of opportunity, I would say to do anything to. more at that point. And I, I didn't want to think about my opportunity when we were going through so many things at once. That's I, true. True. I remember the first time I was born into a very very rich house. I have to say this, we were very wealthy when we were born. But I think the first time I, I had to take a bus on my own was probably uh, Hari Priya is here, who's my cousin, and she can relate to a lot of these things that I'm saying because I think we were taken by car everywhere. We had uh, you know people to wait on us everywhere and whatever, and then overnight everything shifted, right? And uh, when I was I was in the eleventh uh, or tenth or eleventh, and uh, you know you you take it's very very different when you take a PTC bus for the first time when you're fifteen or sixteen. And you're not used to that world at all. Or it's know it's that. very, yeah. very different when you f do footboarding for the first time when you're 17 or 18. All the other boys know how exactly to do it and they've mastered that art. And now I'm you yo, yo, Martin, Ricky, Arna, help So, you know, when you, when you go overnight from, I won't say to becoming a pauper, but, but not having that kind of uh, anymore, your mind also shifts automatically. You're not, you're no longer thinking only about yourself. You're thinking about, uh, I, I, in my case, especially about my mother. So um, why why would you have? Uh, how did you end up in the in the U.S. and to do that PhD? Oh, that's that, a long that, story. That, that, that so you, that, um, you were, that you were laboring over. So uh, so talk a little bit about the I'll academic that. pursuit and did you enjoy it? Uh, how difficult was it? I've always enjoyed academics. Uh, the reason I've enjoyed academics is that I'm one of the freaks of nature who like writing exams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and I'll tell you why. I think for me personally, an examination is a fantastic thing because it's two to three hours of absolutely focused work. And after that, you never have to see that thing ever again, right? You don't have to encounter it ever again. And, um, and I loved mathematics and I loved doing well, right? So I loved all these things. And that two hours always felt to me to be some of the most creative uh, space that you can, especially uh, papers like English. Uh, papers like history, right, um, or language papers, because you're you're freely, creatively expressing everything you know and putting that into concentrated space for two hours. It's actually a very cathartic, transformative process. Even if you do badly, that that's independent. I flunked when I went to the PhD. The first economics paper I wrote, I flunked, and at the young age of 23, I I cried. Um, because I was made to feel very stupid. So I've gone through that also. But I'm saying that academics I always enjoyed for that reason. So it wasn't as if 
you had it, to give I, a piano and it go didn't to feel like a sacrifice okay, let me put it okay, that way i mean okay. now coming to think of it and now when i have my very very dark moments and i keep thinking because every musician i'm working with right is a genius in some ways the world keeps calling these people exceptional musicians when they've been doing it for illa sadharanama solva 40 years i have been playing 30 years i have been playing and i feel very 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 ashamed because for me the journey is once again resumed only for the last 10 years and i'm nothing compared to them you know and i'm all the time intimidated because i'm sitting with people on stage who you know been playing continuously for 40 years our, our, our the moment they were born itself people were falling at their feet and the mother they're so used to that kind of thing that i've had to earn that that's a different discussion so coming back to this so i did economics and i was good at it and uh, that unfortunately what happened is i think i would call that period the non self period because once you get into that flow um you know it sort of circumstances shape you into what is the next thing to do so the rest of my friends were writing the cat exam i also wrote the cat exam the rest of my friends were doing something i also did the same thing the rest of my friends were doing something else they also did the same thing at um i i i missed a couple of things in that 10 years um the couple of things that i missed was of course i mean as i said our financial circumstances were very different at that point and um my father was not well at all for that entire period I mean, he was not in a position to guide or mentor or advise it was my mother and my brother uh, the both of them who were doing everything they can to save the family from financial ruin and disaster and i always felt that i should not be troubling them for something as pitiful and pathetic as what i want to do for my career so it just sort of went with whatever i wanted to do so i got into advertising right what a terrible decision that was um i i've never forgotten that because uh, i went to work in ogilvy in bombay uh, right after i did my first masters and um the first day i had to take a train from chembur to kurla Uh, another train from kurla to dadar because this harbor line central line whatever uh, rv rajan is here right he taught me too when i was in myka so oh my god my entire past is here <laughs> i can't lie at all okay so uh, from uh, from from chembur to dadar dadar to kurla and then uh, and kurla to dadar dadar lend the bus eduthundu ponom office ku and pona odne vand i think ogilvy had brought that rule that 9:30 am if you don't clock in it's half day cut pay cut or something and i was surviving on 10000 rupees a month or something in bombay <laughs> right so that that 9:30 meant everything you know and that i think was also my first introduction to bribery because i bribed that uh, security guard patruba kurta ti saapte enak vand aam in porter abdina so they woke up to that also and kept electronic meters then then they couldn't do that anymore so you know it was very hard to do that on a daily basis and bombay in the rains i'm sure many people here can empathize with all of that and as a chennai boy who's come from you know uh, life started with car and driver went into ptc bus and foot board and now doing this and at the end of the day my job was to go and serve tea and coffee to everybody go take the photocopies i think for the longest time uh, my own boss didn't know my name you know which is a very very different situation i think my name was just you there i think my name was you there that's all go take these copies go do this go to airport these uh, videos have to reach uh, whatever hong kong to go to setmax uh, you just go and <laughs> you know go to the airport and get it some more couriered this is all i did for like two years i one one year or good part of a year and a half this was all i was doing every day and the only outlet to music i would have had at that time is on the bombay local train lalla i'll be standing on that you hold that railing i'll be playing on that railing every day you know i'll be playing on that railing and I've, you know my my roommates remember that that part of my life very well and uh, i i'll never forget that one of my roommates was kind enough to go and um, um he got a table a dining table kind of table adla for for my birthday you know that the other roommate painted the piano notes on that and they that was what they gave me oh, okay. as a gift and um i i was one of the gifts that i I've, i've been most touched by that they missed it so much that i had to do that and every day i would do that and um i put uh, my brother is not here but he will remember this one conversation 
that I was calling from Bombay and uh, I remember it, I had to pay a security deposit for my flat or something like that. And uh, I was feeling very bad to ask my mother <laughs> that because uh, all this money problems. Right? And I spoke to my brother because that used to be my route to get to my mother in those days. Now it's the other way around. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I spoke to my brother and my brother's, um, I said 20,000 rupees on more. I mean, I don't know if I can see it, I don't know if I can see it. 20,000 rupees and more cut on that landlord was abusing me in a language that I didn't understand. And I think that Hindi is very weak, ask my wife. Uh, but I understand Mumbai very well. Uh, at least I understand how to abuse in different languages. Um, and the 20,000 rupees, I asked my brother and he's, my brother's question to me was, I'll get it organized, but don't tell Amma about it. <laughs> you know? And we went through all of this uh, and I had to have it sent to my friend's place so that it doesn't get traced to me. We went through an elaborate way, but we went through all of that. And somewhere down that, I had such a terrible experience with my immediate boss who humiliated me once very badly. Um, this is after doing my due justice. I think Kakusa clean pandra tavara or ellame panita nanakara for that uh, godforsaken place. And uh, you know, that at that point, um, at some point, I just decided enough was enough. And the kind of politicking and the kind of people that I encountered, it's a terrible phase. Um, and the one decision I made is I'll move back to Madras at least. You know, the, let me at least be, uh, you know, among familiar people and familiar faces. And um, was it with music in mind or was no, it just moved? Uh, to music had, I had actually given up thinking about music because it used to hurt me too much to think about it. Uh, I wanted, I that wanted, is the I wanted to hear you. It used to uh, hurt me that. so much to think about it because it's... Um, you know, and I had, um, you know, I was still in touch with a lot of friends who had taken to Carnatic music and who were already beginning to sing and perform and, you know, December season and all of these kinds of things. And it's not when you are, when you are getting out of the Virar super fast in Andheri West, okay, and peak hour, trust me, if somebody came and said, that's the last thing that you're going to be worried about. You know, it's of no consequence to your world. The only thing of your consequences, if Virar, if you have to get out at Anderi, and if you're not already up on your feet from Mahim, oh my God, you're going to be trampled to death. That's the only thing that is on your mind. And I think even till today, it remains the same, you know. So you completely banish music? Uh, there is no question of even thinking about it. Uh, the only times, as I said, that music would surface, I remember this very much because, um, again, I remember this with pain. Um, there was a performance at Alliance Frances when I was working in um, Ogilvy. Uh, some French uh, trio or something had performed in Bombay and uh, me and two other colleagues, we decided to go to that. And um, you know what fascinated me about that? I don't know the name of the trio. The, what fascinated me was I was seeing a piano after nearly two years that particular evening and I was so, so moved and drawn to, you know, piano, 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 the whole concert, I don't, I didn't register what was happening. At the end of the concert, I went and started playing that piano. I took the permission of the pianist and I started playing the piano. The next day there was an article in Times or something and which said, uh, unfortunately, uh, you remember this? I don't know, I, I think you still have the cutting. Um, the urge for Indians to show off, that uh, they can't keep their filthy hands to themselves, but they have to go and play on the instrument. And I said, Paravala, there is a record that I have played. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that... Uh, this so when, th when, when, when this was happening to you, when, when this, uh, you know, that, that moment at, at the Alliance Francis, when this happened to you, even then it didn't occur it to even you that... No, because as I said, the financial reality was one thing. <laughs> Um, and also I had self-hypnotized uh, myself into believing that this is my life, you know, that I'm going to be in advertising or market research or something like that and, you know, for the rest of my life and this is this is what you do. So then you quit and Ogilvy and you went to the US? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I was, I was working here for a while. I worked in Madras for about a year and a half and I worked in market research. It was slightly better because it was numbers. Mm -hmm. Numbers are great friends. They don't lie, you know, unless you're a creative accountant. <laughs> so... Um, so I was working with that and then I think coming back to Madras was a good thing because concha concha I started getting involved in music, you know, not, not in a big way, but you know, at least I could play 
you know we had a little college band i could play with friends i i know i played for some children's productions you know those kinds of things kutti kutti things which you know at least at the end of the day edo music irukku life la abdin you know it's it's amazing to me that today you can go on television and sing eight film songs um lip sync to film songs and you can win a flat and become a celebrity out of that you know uh, there is no question of that reality and i'm talking about 1998 i'm not talking of that long ago right, i mean this just right. didn't exist you know it's only when i was working and worked in madras for two more years and then that's when um, i said let me at least go abroad to uh, to study you know the my, my eldest brother had told me this once he said you're happiest under two situations either you're writing exams <laughs> or you're playing the piano since you no longer play the piano you should continue writing exams so go abroad so it was it was it was a decision based on that no it was a decision based on the fact that uh, you know you're working Th- this is suddenly become your life you're 23 or you're 24 and you suddenly look at okay in 5 years time oh i get to be what my boss is doing and how exciting is that they work 3 hours more than i do <laughs> and then in another 20 years they're going to be doing the same thing and somewhere i think i think it was the beginning of that rebellion inside me i'm not sure it was but i was getting very fed up of of data checking on a daily basis and um, and wasn't great money right i mean how much money can you be making at junior levels so the point is i said okay let me go abroad let me go abroad and do something and let's see what it leads to so i did an mba and when i was doing my mba in the states and that by then i think our situation was beginning to stabilize a little bit but i still had to take tremendous loans to go and study and i <laughs> i remember i went to bombay to meet some friends to say bye before i left for the states and they all said what is this mba costing you and i said whatever it was you know 20 lakhs or 30 lakhs and everybody went silent in the room for a minute they said are you insane i mean why would you spend 20 lakhs on a, on an education and i said the whole thing is a loan and they said what are you going to do i said i'm going um i remember there was a book by um i forget i look at this i've totally forgotten all of this the entertainment economy i don't know who wrote that um and i'd written that i <laughs> just reading that book on the on the on the flight or something and i said i think i'm going to work in the entertainment economy this is how clueless i was on on the reason i was going but i just thought okay go to america and something better will open up because i'd seen my cousins had all gone and you know they were quote and quote doing well so i said this is what maybe this is this is a slightly better economic future see again through these 10 years it's economics that's uh, dominating the decision not music okay music it's sort of gone out of the on the first day of my mba school again one of my roommates i have always had great roommates i must say this including my current one uh, my wife <laughs> so uh,